Hey everybody. I recently redid my wiring up here on my wall. For those who have watched me in my videos, you may have noticed this in the background. You may have noticed the three bare wires up on my wall. Now, this, this to clarify, this is not 120 volts coming out of my wall up here. This is low voltage DC. And I got this set up to distribute power to my lights. My um, rigged up pencil sharpener there. My speakers next to the monitor right there. And this other light over here. I used to have a desk fan that ran off of 12 volts and I had it plugged up right there, but I've since replaced it with that one there. Basically, I um, created this setup in 2010. At the time, all I had was some old fence wiring. Thin steel fence wiring. Not a very good conductor at all. And um, I want to say I used some pretty thick gauge wiring to run from the computer power supply up to the wiring. The thing about computer power supplies is they have short circuit protection built in. So if, let's say if these wires were to smack for any reason, the power supply would shut off. And I've never had them, I never had a short on this for the three years I've had this up here. But I've had resistance issues with the older wiring. The thin steel wiring, since it wasn't a good conductor, would get pretty warm under full load. And I have a considerable amount of voltage drop from one side to another. Devices on this end would see only about 10 volts or so while it's getting about 12 volts of supply. The upper wire is plus 12 volts, center wire is ground, lower wire is plus 5 volts. Currently the only plus 5 volt device I have on this line is my little thermometer there, which actually measures the outside temperature which is currently 71 degrees outside. But anyways, um, last year I came across some aluminum fence wiring. So I replaced it with that. The aluminum was a lot thicker and conducted better than the steel. Though I still had some issues. I could not solder anything to it because aluminum is not a good material to try to solder to. So over time, these connections, especially these and the ones that um, run these halogen lights, would get extremely hot and that was not very safe so what I did was I got me some motor winding wire this is copper more or less um, I got it off of like armature just like this you can see where I've actually gutted the other the two poles and still have um, windings left on one pole of this armature this is a 540 size DC motor you'll find these in Matter of fact, this one here probably came out of a um, cordless vacuum cleaner. I actually have a very big stash of these motors because I have a Traxxas Stampede and I would like to get these motors for, I mean, you can get these vacuum cleaners for like dirt cheap, like a couple of dollars. And um, I actually still have one down here I've never even touched yet. From the thrift store for $2.92. That's how I get these motors. And normally what I would do is I'd either use the motors themselves, but the better thing I would do is actually gut the armatures out of them and reuse them in um, rebuildable motors for RC trucks. And they've done pretty well. But anyways, back to the point here. Um, these motors are a good source of copper windings. And this, um, these wires have, ins have an insulated coating on them. Now basically what I did here was... I took a pair of dikes and snipped the wire near this brush and unwinded the um, wire and then I run through some sandpaper to try to get some of the insulation off and to straighten out the wire because when it comes off it's real coiled looking not straight at all and there is the end result that's what the wiring looks like what's funny is this copper wiring is a little bit thinner than the aluminum but copper is such a good conductor and everything solders right up to it, no problem at all. I just use um, 6040 lead, um, lead tin solder, <clears throat> um, rosin core, solder right up. And I'd use a little bit of flux just to make sure I got a good connection. And everything is connected very, very good. 
No resistance at all. I could touch this and it's not even warm. I got this 20 watt halogen, this 35 watt halogen, this fan, and I can add this pencil sharpener going too. That's probably about four amps of load. And the copper wire would barely even get warm and the connections would stay cool. So definitely a big plus. So anyways, um, kind of a random video, but I figured let's give an update on this. Now obviously, if you ever decide to do anything like this, you always want to be careful. You never want to do this with high voltage, only low voltage. I mean, there is no way I'd ever take 120 volts AC and run it like this. Dangerous. But low voltage DC, as long as you're not putting too, too much of a load on it, it's pretty safe. The good thing about this is it's easy to connect things if you ever need to connect stuff. Like last week I connected these speakers, all I had to do was find me an old wall wart that had the same kind of plug on the end for the speakers, get the polarity correct, heat up the soldering iron, strip the ends of the wires, and just solder them right in. And now I can run the speakers without having an extra plug plug taken up. Used to be I had to plug the wall wart into this plug here and I'd lose this plug. But now I, can, I still have this plug available and I can run my speakers when I have a computer in for service. Anyways, this is a random video, but hand the question for comments. Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.